take a look at two big name investors and how they're playing the markets. Ray Dalio and Michael Cagino. The latter has a 1970s style plan to fight inflation and you'll hear about him in a minute. But let's start with Ray Dalio. He's a hedge fund manager with an uncanny ability to predict the future. In 2007, he warned about the buildup of credit derivatives and forecast a bad ending to the housing boom. Then he warned the Bush administration about the solvency of U.S. banks long before anyone else saw the need for bailouts. Now he's focused on Europe. Dalio says it's because he spent years understanding how the machine works, by which he means the macro economy. Dahlia runs Bridgewater Associates, one of the largest and consistently best performing hedge funds in the world. I spoke with him at the Bloomberg Markets 50 Summit yesterday. There is nothing surprising about the, in, the European debt crisis. Should be no surprise because the payments were due. You know, in other words, we could take the payment streams. You know that the maturities are going to happen here and there's this quantity. This whole notion that there's a perception like faith does not make sense because it's not like that. Every day there's an exchange. And if you look at all the reasons for that exchange, um, there are some reasons that um, some are allowed to own this, or well, let's say banks buying. Banks, when they are, buy bonds, um, um, have limitations. So because they bought a certain amount of bonds over a period of time when they could expand their balance sheet, does not mean that they continue to do that because they can't expand their balance sheet. So therefore, you could not have that same amount of buying, match that number up to the amount of selling that needs to happen. Is there a gap? There's, it, it was apparent, I think, should be apparent, if you do the numbers, that there would be a gap. How big is the gap? Who is going to fill the gap? The so what does that mean? Let, let's follow on to that point for a moment. If the financial crisis in Europe and what's taken place thus far, what's happening now, is not surprising, what else won't surprise you? In other words, what's almost a foregone conclusion in the sense of what has to be done to solve the problem? Uh, I think that the most important thing that we should have is, is a quality conversation of how the machine works. In other words, not when you, like there are two levels I can answer that question at. You know, like what needs to be done? Well, the choices are you can either transfer wealth from the rich to the poor, or you can print a certain amount of money, or you can write down the debt. And you can go through and you can figure out which of those you want to do, and those what's one level of choice. The biggest problem, I think, is not having a quality enough conversation at the higher level of how does a machine work? How does, what are the choices? What has happened before? Like, like, you know, um, the IMF and you just have to go through a list of uh, sovereign restructurings. There's a certain process. It works a certain way for good logical reasons. Do you understand how the machine works? And I don't think, I think that the thing that has to be different is the stepping back generally. Understand how does the deleveraging work? How does, how does the machine, how's the economic machine work? And therefore, what's going to happen? How does politics work? Politics, the history of democracies, when we have um, economic crisis, there is greater polarity in, in democracies. And then it becomes less functional. This is very normal. Hitler came into power in 1933 because there was disorder in a democratic system, because, uh, in a depression type environment. So all of those, it, that's how the machine works. And the machine basically, so let's have a quality conversation of how does the economic machine work, the political machine work, and then if you understand that, I, that's what I mean, reality, principles, then you can know how to deal with it. That was Ray Dalio, founder of Bridgewater Associates. He was ranked by Bloomberg Markets Magazine, one of the 50 most influential people It was a great conversation. He was pretty fired up, pretty passionate. He was, Always he good a, to 